Hi, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, this is Navneet, and I make makeup-related videos, and uh, I share my tips and tricks or my knowledge with you all related to makeup. And if you have any uh, query or you're interested in such topics, do subscribe to the channel and uh, give me your support. And uh, comment down any query you have related to makeup, and uh, I will be really happy to share my views. So in today's video, I wanted to share 10 makeup mistakes that I see people doing on the internet or even my family friends. I've been doing my makeup since uh, five years. In the start, I used to make uh, these mistakes myself, so I can understand why people are making these. And uh, through uh, really doing the R and D, researching about what is makeup. Uh, through Wayne Goss, uh, makeup artists like Wayne Goss, uh, Hindash and many such great makeup artists that are available on YouTube. I've learned a lot about makeup and basically what the makeup represents. It uh, represents uh, just enhancement. It doesn't uh, mean that you need to change yourself completely, it just means enhancement. By knowing these 10 mistakes, you can faster in the process of learning makeup. And uh, let's start with the video then. So the first mistake I see people doing uh, on the internet or uh, even uh, people I know is that uh, they don't understand themselves, uh, their own face shape, skin type or skin tone or undertone. And it can create uh, like not a suitable look for you. Basically what you can do is take a mirror like have this uh, this concave convex mirror i will uh, place it uh, in front of me and then see what i want to hide or what i want to enhance through makeup and uh, what i want to do is i want to like enhance my eyes make them look a little bit bigger like i have down a little bit downturned eyes so i want to uh, lift them so i can lift them by uh, creating a eyeliner look i will explain it throughout the video and I want to lift my lips as well. I want to turn, uh, push this area back. What I can do is uh, by bronzing or contouring on this side. And uh, I want to remove my dark circles. I want to enhance my eyebrows. So see what, see, and uh, look what, for what you want to enhance and what you want to remove and work according to that. Not uh, like someone else. You can take inspiration from like, I watch many makeup videos and I, uh, from every video, I learn something so keep on researching keep on learning more about makeup second mistake I see people doing uh, is that they overdo everything basically like uh, if I want to contour I will put so much uh, contour on the side and then try to remove it blend it and it uh, the product needs some area to blend uh, so it will blend somewhere else and uh, I do over skincare like I'm doing my own whole nighttime skincare routine before makeup and if the uh, skincare doesn't work with the makeup, the makeup will uh, start cracking and it will not uh, turn well for you basically if you do too much skincare before makeup and uh, not understanding the products you're using. They're water based, oil based uh, products and you need to understand what kind of skincare works with that too and you need so, uh, somewhat uh, really good uh, around 10 years of experience to understand that. So you don't need to do, do that. The basic thing I, or you, I want you to start with is the basic skincare. Basic skincare is moisturize. Use a good moisturizer in a good amount. Don't over moisturize and don't uh, under moisturize. So I'm going to use super light moisturizer. I've been using it uh, quite often and I mostly use it before uh, makeup. I'm going to use it under the eyes as well and uh, placing it under the eye, some part of the eyes and then uh, taking it on my fingertips and massaging it massaging it on my face massage the moisturizer properly so that you can touch your face and see if uh, there are any dry patches or uh, somewhere need uh, some part of the face like in winters I get uh, dry on uh, this side so I need to over moisturize this side and you can also use serums as well just keep in mind that the serum should be suitable with the foundation you're going to use. If you have any pimple, uh, new pimple and it, it is showing a mark, do uh, keep in mind to moisturize it as well. Like I don't have a new pimple but there are some uh, pigmentation that marks that uh, are uh, coverable with the foundation. So massage it and then throw the under eyes, use soft hands. Let it sit for some time and then we will start with the makeup. 
Oh, after letting the moisturizer sit, I'm going to uh, use this Earth Rhythm lip cheek tint just to give a little bit of uh, moisture to the lips. So, the third mistake I see people doing is uh, not color correcting or color correcting in a wrong way or over color correcting. So, you should be according to your own face shape, color, and tone. And uh, you need to understand that what is color correcting. Color correcting is using the opposite shade on the color wheel to uh, like uh, remove that specific color. If you use orange on a blue color, it will uh, turn into brown. That, that is what I, we want to do on our face. We want to, if I want to remove the blueness of my under eye dark circles, I will use orange. For my skin tone, for uh, someone uh, with a lighter skin tone, I can use a peach color corrector to tame it down but if you are of a darker skin tone you can use the orange color corrector it depends upon the skin tone range like uh, from peach to orange if you have a very dark complexion orange will uh, work good for you but for uh, someone like me orange color corrector doesn't make any sense you will need to use a lot of foundation to cover that orange color corrector so the second thing is the red color correction red can be covered by green but uh, these kind of red pigmentation can be covered by foundation so i don't need to use green color and the blueness i can cover with the color corrector i will uh, start using under my eyes and i don't use color corrector on a daily basis it's just about uh, if you are going for a special occasion or a special function and you want to look your best you can do that but a little, a little bit of uh, color getting through your face a little bit of pigmentation getting through your face through makeup is a good thing you will look more like a natural uh, kind of a girl some people will not even know if you are uh, you are doing any kind of makeup so a little bit of pigmentation showing peeking through is a good thing but if you're going to get a photograph full day to meet with new new people and uh, during like a celebration or your own wedding or you are a wedding guest somewhere your sister's wedding or a close relative's wedding or a friend's wedding you need to look your best now so that is why uh, we color corrected it at that time so don't use the orange color corrector until unless you need it you are, if you have already bought orange color corrector just uh, put the orange color on the back of your hand then put the concealer in it tame it down then use it like i have this from uh, this maybelline uh, dream smooth mousse and this is like a peach shade darker to my own skin tone and i can use it to color correct because uh, because because it has uh, like peach undertones into it and it can cover the blueness it will not cover redness uh, it can cover redness through its coverage but not the uh, but blue like already see how the matlab, uh, my uh, eyes are looking even this should uh, be how a color corrector should look you don't need to apply a lot of foundation to cover that color this color now it is a little bit darker but it is working for me and uh, so this is how a color corrector should look so the fourth mistake i see people doing is uh, not blending uh, blending properly keep it uh, take it eyeshadow or your uh, base or anything uh, blending is the key to get the flawless more most natural look so first you need to understand what kind of uh, brushes you can use i have a, a brush video as well i will attach the link somewhere or it will mention somewhere about a kind of that video specific video if you want to know what kind of brushes i use but to give you a rough idea i use this swiss beauty blender brush and this sponge it's a random foundation blending brush and you use different motions uh, using this i can use a tapping motion i can use a tap and flick motion it depends upon the brush you're using so for a sponge i if i need more of a natural look uh, everyday look i use i will use a sponge damp sponge so i'm taking this l'oreal infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation and i'm going to squeeze out one pump only you can see i'm going to use both the sponge and uh, the foundation brush to uh, make you understand what kind of difference it makes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up some of the foundation on the brush and just tap it then start tapping on my face like this i used half a pump and it is already covering uh, doesn't soak too much of the product but a sponge will what i will suggest you if you want to use uh, get a natural look but uh, want coverage you can do is apply the foundation with a brush one or two pumps then take a beauty blender and uh, blend it somewhat more 
Now I'm going to take the sponge and uh, pick up the product and then blending it. I'm doing tap and this type of motion. You can use a tap motion as well. But I'm just placing the product, that is why I'm doing this kind of motion. Now it is given, uh, as you can already see, the coverage is less, but it is uh, like a giving an even tone to the face by placing a little bit of the product. I am using half the pump on both the sides. And it is easier to blend with the sponge. For a beginner, I think uh, sponge is the best option. After using it, sometime you can invest in a brush, in a good brush. And uh, learn more about makeup, I guess. I have used half pumps on both the sides. And it is, uh, it has more coverage in this side. But it is like more of a natural finish. And this is more of a like a, a makeup finish. And uh, you can see the difference yourself. I'm go going to use one pump more. But uh, as you can see, I need to cover this, uh, the pigmentation and the darkness here. So I will use a brush again to cover this. And uh, I think the finish uh, uh, on the remaining face is good. So what you can do after bl uh, blending the foundation with the brush, you can just pick up the excess product with the sponge. So what you can do is just blend further like this on the areas. You don't need so much pigmentation, but I want a natural look, especially on the forehead. Okay, I'm going to use one pump more. Half a pump, I guess, I'll just a little bit of this like this. I'm going to pick up the product. And then just blend it on the pigmentation. This shade is a little bit darker to my skin tone, as you can see. But I will uh, make it work by using a lighter concealer. So I have applied uh, the foundation and I think uh, I, I've covered most of the areas that I want to cover. Like there is a little bit of pigmentation showing through and it is okay. And uh, the things I want to cover up more is uh, like I need uh, the blueness is still peeking through. So I will use a, a concealer to cover it up and somewhat here. And uh, the concealer in the shade Sand, it is already emptied out. I will uh, buy it uh, again. It is a really good product. It is really good uh, for photos as well. So if you are going to get uh, photos clicked all day, it is a really good product. So the first, fifth mistake I see people doing is over applying products like uh, if i've already color corrected and applied foundation so don't need much of this concealer i'm going to use just a little bit little dots to cover that blueness and uh, any redness or any uh, color that is peeking through then i'm going to take a mirror and blend it with my own finger so that the coverage is still there and the sixth mistake i see people doing while blending a concealer is this basically uh, don't take the concealer uh, too much uh, high under your eyes. You can just keep it like this. Like the color is still peeking through. And I don't want to remove this color. I just want to uh, remove the darkness on uh, under my eyes like this area. Or any redness on the face. Keep the blending on this side, don't ding it here. For understanding, you can lighter this area. You can lighter this area, but keep this area bare. Because there we have uh, many creases here, so it can... Uh, if you are a beginner, it will not be a good thing. So seeing in the mirror, I have covered most of the things I want to get covered. So this was the base, as you can see. Still, a little bit of color or pigmentation is still uh, peeking through and I want to keep it because I want more of a natural look. I think use this Fit Me Concealer in the shade Light. It is a little bit it is a little bit lighter to my skin tone. The mistake I see here uh, like using too much product. What I do is I color correct like a triangle like this. So I don't need to make a triangle. I just need a line and I will blend the foundation. Uh, I will blend the concealer uh, like this way. I just need a line. 
it depends upon the coverage of your concealer as well this fit me coverage gives uh, like a medium to low coverage so i can use this much of, uh, this much amount high coverage concealer it just needed one or two dots and it you're good to go so you're a beginner you can invest into such low to medium coverage uh, concealers because i can build it up if i see i am not uh, getting the kind of coverage i want i can just build it up uh, the blending part the blending mistake is uh, uh, people are trying to blend it in the wrong way like uh, let me show you i'm going to like i have a, if i have a high coverage concealer i will put a dot here and blend it like downwards and like this depends upon your face shape as well seventh mistake is and not understanding your face shape so i can elaborate it through highlight and contouring what i can do is like understand that i want to get a uplifted face like i want to get a, like a high cheekbones kind of a look so that is why i am highlighting on this side and i am contour contour i will be contouring on this side like a, a kind of this kind of a look i want to push this area back and bring this lighter area forward and i want to uh, uplift my lips as well like this and uh, i want i'm a more of a heart shaped face and if you have like a longer forehead and you want to shorten it you can use a contour shade here or a bronzer shade here so, uh, if you want a shorter nose you if you want a smaller nose i'm good man with my nose as well i don't do much this other thing i do uh, i do is i don't contour the nose much but i highlight what you can do is you can highlight this area properly like this like blend like this i am blending remember not to bring, uh, bring your uh, concealer up on the eye just blend it like this the fifth or sixth mistake we fell me are making blend it in the right way and i want to uh, uh, give a uplifted look at uplifted look so i'm going to just do this motion as you can see you can see already see the difference it is looking more uplifted the nose is looking a little bit uh, smaller i hope you can see the difference for concealer you can bring the concealer here as well for, uh, for a highlighting shade as well, as well but don't bring it too much near to the eyelids just keep it here if you have placed too much product and want to remove some you can just use a sponge what you can do is just uh, tap a little bit on the face so don't remove remove too much coverage just a little bit i think want to show you how you can contour as well i don't need too much contouring contouring i can powder contour but i wanted to show you uh, about the face shape part so i'm going to uh, like a little bit of the product come back of my hand this is the matte poreless foundation normal to oily oily in the shade 335 classic tan this is how the shade is looking i have this dual fiber brush that i use for uh, my eye makeup this is the pack 213 I can use it is a dual fiber uh, like brush I so I can use it on the on for cream products as well that is what I am going to do I'm going to pick up the product on this like this so using your brushes uh, properly I'm going to pick up the product and for dual fiber motion you uh, need a, a different kind of motion you need like this flicking motion so i will uh, show a face chart here many face shapes uh, and you can see there are square triangle inverted triangle rectangle uh, round face shape oval face shape and there are different techniques that are usable for different face shapes but uh, see my face what uh, i i'm not going to specify myself into any specific uh, face shape i will see what i want to uh, like push back i want this area to push back i wanted a i want a highlighted more of a uplifted face so what you can do if you want the sim, a similar look you can do is i have this uh, bone as you can see i want to push this bone back so i'm going to contour on this side like this my natural uh, contour is uh, here but i'm going to contour a little bit above that
I'm using the back of the hand to remove the excess product. Then I'm going to blend on the edges properly. So blending is the key. You need to see where you want uh, your product placement, then blend accordingly. I'm not picking up an extra product, just uh, removing the product on the brush. I'm just going to take a mirror to see. And uh, I'm not going to bring it, bring it any lower, any lower than this. Just keeping it here. Like I've made a triangle like this. Like if you have uh, more of a prominent cheekbones, like I don't have a prominent cheekbones when I keep my face like this, but only when I smile. But if you keep your face like this and you still have some, uh, like I have some uh, prominent cheeks bone like this, then I speak, but not on a normal face. What you can do is you can bring the contour like this. All right. And uh, I'm going to blend uh, the uh, some more concealer. I'm going to pick up more of the contour shade and blend. And don't bring it too much here. If you want to, you can uh, make a, like a C on this side. And just uh, keep the product downwards. So by blending is the key. You can don't need to put every product on your face directly. Just uh, pick the product on, uh, put the product on the back of your hand and then apply it. It is the best way if you're a be beginner especially. I think we were on the seventh mistake, right? So the seventh mistake I see people doing is not knowing uh, what kind of products uh, they are using. So the seventh mistake I see people doing is not understanding what kind of a product they are using. And uh, by that I mean not understanding your skin type also. So if you have a oily skin type, like I have a, I have a normal to oily skin tone. I get oil, more, most of the oils here and uh, this is normal. So I can use different products. Uh, using an oily skin type product on a dry skin type person, it will not work good. So understand that. At a poreless, it is for uh, normal to oily skin. No, it is not for dry skin. That is why it is mentioned matte. So understand if the product name is matte, you can, the oily person can use it. And if the product uh, name doesn't mention anything or it, it is mentioning glowy, so a dye person can use it. A normal person can use anything. So keep that in mind. Or oh, like I have this eye pencil. This is this is a wet and wild eye pencil. And uh, then shade Pete and Mink. This is a brown eye pencil. And uh, it is a really good product. And what it does is uh, like if I have applied it uh, uh, like this, it will smudge. And it, it is what is this is made for. Like uh, if I want, don't want a specific eyeliner look, if you want an eye, uh, eyeliner look, you will use an eyeliner. But this kind of pencils are mostly used for smudging. Like if I apply it here, uh, I want it to smudge. It will cover my whole, the whole eye and smudge it properly. This is what is, uh, this eyeliner is made for. So don't uh, say bad things about this as uh, it is usable for that spe specific pur purpose other example is a mascara like this mars mascara and uh, this this it is has like this a big wand so for a natural look uh, it is not usable uh, but there are many uh, mascaras that are uh, it comes that comes in a smaller wand and uh, don't uh, don't have much of the product into it that is especially because uh, if you want to use such kind of mascara, if you want a more of a natural look, you want like don't want spiky kind of uh, eyelids. S sometimes people are using eyelashes, so they can just use that little amount of that specific mascara and uh, apply the uh, apply their eyelashes and call it a day. But this kind of mascara is for intense uh, eye makeup look. So invest into mascaras or any product, understanding what you want and invest accordingly that is why i use investment uh, mostly you know not buying or purchasing because makeup is an investment like uh, a mascara works for around two or three months uh, uh, some products are usable according to that so understand uh, uh, that you are investing into makeup products you're using your hard-earned money to buy those products that's so uh, uh, making the best out of it by understanding what kind of eye shape what kind of a face shape you want on your face 
what kind of a look you want on that day specific day understanding that will help you uh, in the maximum like uh, if i'm using the May uh, maybelline uh, eyeliner i can't smudge it na uh, any kind of eyeliner basically i can't smudge it so it won't be usable for any creating any kind of eye shadow looks and uh, it will be just for an eyeliner look but an eye pencil like this wet and wild eye pencil it is usable in many ways so understand what that specific product is usable for and use it according to that so uh, i think the eighth eighth mistake eighth mistake i see people doing on the internet is basically with their blush placement and uh, if even if you're not contouring and using just a blush uh blush placement changes your face shape a lot and i want to I want you to understand that i am going to you use different techniques on both sides so that i'm going to use a, a lipstick this is the maybelline lipstick in the shade almond pink it is a really beautiful shade let me show you the shade only it's such a beautiful shade i'm going to use it as a blush today i wanted to show you the placement after using creams i will start using powders but i wanted to show you through uh, creams only what kind of difference it does it make so included in the second mistake like overdoing everything if you apply the lipstick directly to your already done base it can remove the foundation work that you've already done to your face and uh, you might have to reapply that foundation specifically if you have pigmentation here keep the products and everything on the back of your hand then apply it now don't apply it directly because uh, for, especially for a beginner because you can use a lot of product that will not be removable and can you you can move the foundation uh, underneath that specific product so um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my uh, this uh, middle finger uh, this is the softer the softest finger uh, and all of the five fingers that is why we uh, mostly i use this mostly makeup artists use this uh, the different blush placement is be if you want a more of a highlighted face if i want a more of a highlighted face what uh, what kind of blush placement i will use i will place a blush here don't bring it here just keep it here and i will keep the blush placement like this the blending like this i will place the blush here and keep the blending like this and blend like with the stepping motion i'm just doing this stepping motion continuously taking a little bit more product and just blending it this is more of a modern day look uplifted face you can see the difference with no blush with blush it's a cute look i mostly use uh, do this to uh, after makeup but if you want more of a cute face cute kind of look what you can do is take the same blush place it here but what you need to do is you need to uh, uh, the cute face if you want more of a cheekier face you want your uh, uh, cheeks to show through you can bring it here also uh in this look i kept it like this like this but i'm going to bring it here i'm going to start blending from here then uh, bring it downwards and i'm keeping the blush placement this side the blending in inwards i've blended this side a uh, little bit inward as well this is more of a lena bhushan look this side as you can already see the difference this is more of a uplifted look this is more of a cute face kind of a look as you can see i think it is uh, showable through the uh, photo i'm going to use this arthridam uh, lip and cheek tint as well again i'm going to take it on the back of the hand this is like a beautiful reddish uh, this is in the shade uh, i'm sorry the shade is not mentioned here it is really bad this is more of a red color kind of a uh, shade it's like orangey red shade it is really beautiful but uh, it doesn't last long <laughs> it uh, it is a problem that it doesn't long, last long but it is uh, gives such a shiny kind of a look to the face so after using the almond pink i am going to use this just to show you the placement i'm going to keep it here i 
I'm using two shades just to show you the difference. Now this product is more of a shinier look. Like this is looking a little bit matte now. The lipstick is because matte. But this lip, uh, lip and cheek tint is uh, shinier so it will uh, uh, bring the shine to your face. Understand what kind of product you are using and what the kind of result it make to your face. So understand, keep that in mind. The uh, difference is quite visible. I have applied the blush here and a little bend it a little bit downwards only. But this I have bring, uh, brought it uh, like this. So this, is, this is more of a uplifted look and this is more of a, like a round cheek, a cute kind of a look. But this kind of a look like brings uh, my cheeks down a little bit because I have a, like a big uh, cheek and uh, I, uh, when I'm not smiling it is like bringing my face down. I wanted a more of a uplifted look and it is not giving me that. That is why I use the uh, blusher on this side only. If you want a, uh, for a cute day look you can use this but uh, for a, like a modern day look you are know, wearing a western dress or something like that. I'm going to bring this uh, as well because I want the, both the sides to look similar. Now I want to blend it properly. I'm going to use the same blush and same brush. This is the foundation brush I used earlier and blend the edges. This way the brush will pick up any extra product and blend it further. I'm just blending the edges only, not uh, blending the center as you can see like this. So blending is the key and knowing what you're doing is the key. Then I don't uh, pick up um, uh, too much of the product. So this was the blush placement. Check is uh, the, uh, the nine mistake I see people doing uh, is that not understanding how to use powder products. Like basically you, we have uh, three, time, uh, three types of uh, powder products. It's compact powder and a colored uh, loose powder and uh, a plain white loose powder these three are used for different purposes uh, i would suggest you if you are going to get photographed a lot on that specific day you can use a compact to give you more coverage like you i've used all my cream products and i'm still uh, seeing some of the color peeking through i can use a compressed powder because it has a like, higher coverage than a loose powder so i can use it to cover any part that i want to co get covered more I'm going to make a specific video especially for powders if you want to know more about that and uh, so understand that. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to use a compressed powder, wet and mild face powder. It is already almost emptied out because it is all sold. <laughs> use this random brush from Amazon and uh, what, how to set the face, I'm going to pick up the product, tap the excess powder and I'm going to start from the under eyes. I suppose I want more the, most of the pigmentation here color here the lighter color here and to set the remaining eye I want to highlight this area as well and I'm going to set the areas that I uh, all uh, that crease most for uh, setting your under eyes you uh, just blend it with the your finger and then uh, use the powder here if you have more creases that on a specific area like if you have creases here uh, for an old, older skin person if you have more creases here you can blend the foundation then I use a powder to set it and i'm going to set the whole face up first i'm going to tap the product the creams and the powders mix together then i'm going to use this like kind of this kind of a loud, light lighter motion i'm going to just uh, like move here to show you just just press a little bit both very softly use this kind of motion this is really soft, like I'm barely touching the skin. The other coverage doesn't move anywhere. In mind, use uh, really light hands with your powders because it can remove coverage really easily. The brush can remove coverage. You want to blend the powders and the creams together so it looks uh, like one. So for contouring, I'm going to use the same powder contour. Pick the lighter shade, tapping the extra, extra product and then just contouring the, on the contour I used. See, all right, a little bit on the hand and uh, show. All right, so this was the ninth mistake and the 10th mistake I'm gonna see people doing. 
is uh, doing their eyebrows and lips wrong <laughs> there was a time then uh, when we used to like overdraw our eyebrows and overdraw our lips or doing something else with them so understand yourself what kind of a bow look you want like today uh, for a modern look he want we want a more of a brushed out natural kind of a look uh, the first step is always should be spoolie if you don't want to invest into a spoolie you can just uh, use your mascara wand so you can wash the brush and use that i'm not using any kind of product just uh, brushing it i have this maybelline powder duo and uh, as you can see it is a brown in shade it is brown as you can see i'm not using a black eyebrow pencil black eyebrow pencil is really harsh if you are of a dark, darker complexion uh, black eyebrow pencils will definitely work for you but for a lighter uh, uh, complexion i think browns uh, suits uh, the person more it gives more of a like a natural brow like i've just applied it once and just going to brush it and that is all all what i'm going to do use this kind of a brush like you use uh, as you can see it is really really thin ha na so what i'm going to do is pick up any brown kind of eye pencil or if i have a brow powder it should be brown and just to draw flicks Let's see how light it is it is barely showing through and this is how it should be use a really lighter hand and if you want to draw edges what you can do is just draw it using this like this so lighter hand with your brows you need to use this brown eye pencil again just to contour a little bit i'm not over drawing i'm just uh, drawing the edges i'm going to show, uh, smudge this using this angle brush to make the lines this color will not peek through your lipstick use this pink lipstick just removing any extra product and drawing so starting from the center then using the end of the spoolie as well just to draw over that to overdraw those lips and if you want to get a more of a bigger lips kind of a look what you can do is you can you can use your contour shade or your bronzer shade take it on your finger you can just apply it like this and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm using the same brush just to as you can see i'm doing this really carefully because lips are the like a kind of the mean thing on your on your face like if, you, if you're not doing anything you're doing your lips just your lips you are you can call it a day it will look good the base mistakes i see people doing on the internet these were the 10 mistakes that i see people and i'm just going to complete with my eyes and uh, i'm going to shoot a different video where i'm going to share five mistakes that i see people doing wrong with their eye makeup and uh, if you want to be interested into the, that you can just uh, visit the channel and thank you for watching the video and uh, if you learned something do uh, tell me in the comments what did you learn from new uh, if you learned something new from the video to uh, share in the comments down below and uh, if you uh, want to create this look i have already showed you just keep in mind to use your ba the back of the hand uh, first and then apply it on your face the lighter uh, you should always use the lighter hand to apply that uh, to any kind of a product and uh, lighter hands uh, to blend it out J don't be too harsh with your face makeup otherwise you will have uh, someone else uh, peeking through uh, the mirror to you 
and we don't want that you we want your your yourself a more enhanced yourself that is a uh, basically makeup is done for photo photographs so you, uh, the makeup should look good, good on photographs that is uh, the specific purpose the makeup is made for it is made for stage makeup uh, you want to enhance something or remove something it is basically made for that so understand that and do your makeup accordingly okay thank you i hope you like the video and bye